from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks here in sunny San Jose, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, James Kobielis. We're joined by Pandit Prasad. He is the Analytics Product Strategy and Management at IBM Analytics. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Rebecca. Glad so, to be here. So, do, why don't you just start out by telling our viewers a little bit about what you do in terms of, in relationship with the Hortonworks re relationship and then the other parts of your job. Sure, um, as you said, I am uh, in offering management, which is also uh, known as product management for IBM. Manage the big data portfolio from an IBM perspective. Um, I was also, uh, I'm also working with Hortonworks on, on developing this relationship, nurturing that relationship. Uh, so it's been a year since we announced this partnership. I, we announced this partnership um, exactly last year at the same conference, and now it's been a year. Um, so this year has been a, a journey in aligning the, the two portfolios together, right? So Hortonworks had HDP, HDF. IBM also had similar products. Um, so we have, uh, for example, Big SQL. Uh, Hortonworks has Hive. So how Hive and Big SQL align together? Uh, IBM has a data science experience. Where does that come into the picture um, on top of HDP? So it's been like before this partnership, if you look into the market, it has been like um, you sell Hadoop, you sell a SQL engine, uh, you sell data science. Um, so what this year um, has given us is more of a solution sell. Now with this partnership, we go to the customers and say here is an end-to-end -end experience for you. You start with Hadoop, you put more analytics on top of it, you then bring Big SQL for complex queries and federation virtualization stories, and then finally you, you put um, you know, data science on top of it. So it gives you a complete end-to-end -end solution, the end-to-end -end experience. Uh, for getting the value out of the data lake. Now, IBM, uh, a few years back, released uh, Watson Data Platform for Team Data Science with DSX, Data Science Experiences, one of the tools for data scientists. Is that, is Hortonworks, or sorry, is Watson Data Platform still the, the core, I would call it, I call it DevOps for data science, and maybe that's the wrong term that IBM provides to market, or is, or is there a broader sort of DevOps framework with, within which IBM goes to market these tools? Sure, so Watson Data Platform um, uh, one year ago was uh, more of a cloud uh, platform and it had right. many components of it. Um, and now we are getting a um, lot of components onto the on-prem world. And data science experience is uh, one part of it. So data science experience. There's uh, lots of analytics as well. For, uh, yes. So for, for subject so, matter experts and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, so, and again, Watson um, has a whole suite of uh, services-based offering. Um, data science experience is uh, more of a, a particular aspect of it, right. focused specifically on the data science, and that's been now available on-prem. And now we are building this on-prem stack, um, so we have HDP, HDF, Big SQL, data science experience, and we are working towards adding more and more um, to that portfolio. Well, you have a broader reference architecture and a stack of solutions around AI on power and so forth for more of the deep learning development and so forth. So, mm -hmm. in your relationship with Hortonworks, are they reselling more of those tools into their customer base? I mean, to supplement and extend what they already resell through with DSX, or is that outside the scope of the relationship? No, it is uh, all part of the relationship. Okay. So this has been the these three has been the the core of what we announced last year, and then there are other solutions like we have the whole governance solution, right? So again, it goes back to the partnership. Um, HDP brings with it uh, Atlas. Um, so IBM has a whole suite of. Um, governance portfolio, including the governance catalog. Yeah. So how do you expand the story from being a Hadoop-centric story to an enterprise data lake story, right? So, uh, and then now we are taking that to the cloud and that's what Truada is all about, right? So um, Rob Thomas came out with a blog yeah, today morning uh, talking about Truada, and that is, if you look at it, it is nothing but a yeah, yeah, governed data lake um, hosted offering if you want to simplify it. So that's one way to look at it, and it caters to um, the GDPR requirements as well. For GDPR, for the IBM Hortonworks partnership, 
is the lead solution for GDPR compliance? Is it Hortonworks Data Steward Studio? Or is it any uh, number of solutions that IBM already has for data governance and curation? Or is it a combination of all of that in terms of what you, as, a, as, a, as, a, as partners, propose to customers for you know, soup to nuts GDPR compliance? Give me a sense for... Yeah, it is a combination of yeah. all the above. So yeah. it has HTP, yeah. it has HDF, um, it has um, uh, Big SQL, it has data science experience, it has IBM governance catalog, um, it has IBM data quality, and it has uh, uh, a bunch of security products like Guardium, and it has some new uh, IBM proprietary components um, that are very specific towards data anonymization, <coughs> um, and how do you deal with uh, personal data and sensitive personal data as classified by GDPR, right? So I'm supposed to uh, query some higher level information but I'm not allowed to query deep into the, the personal information, so how do you block those queries? How do you understand those? You know, these are not necessarily part of uh, Data Steward Studio. Yes, yes. Uh, these are some of the proprietary components uh, that are thrown into the mix uh, by IBM. You know, one of the requirements that's not often talked about under GDPR, and mm -hmm. Abbas Ricky of Fort Worth got into it a little bit in his presentation, was the notion that, or the requirement that, um, if you are using an EU citizen's PII to drive algorithmic outcomes, that they have the right to have full, trans they, the PII subject has a right to full transparency into the algorithmic decision paths that were taken, um, in, in, you know, whatever it might be. Now, I remember IBM had a tool under the Watson, with under the Watson brand, that wraps up a narrative of that sort um, is that something that IBM still, it's called Watson Curator or something a few years back. Is that a solution that IBM still offers? Because I'm not, I'm not getting a sense right now that Hortonworks has a specific solution, not to say they may not be working on it, that addresses that side of GDPR. You know what I'm referring to there? Uh, I'm not aware of uh, something from the Hortonworks side beyond the Data no. Steward Studio, which okay. offers uh, okay. basically identification of what some yeah, of the data the, lineage as opposed to model lineage is a, is a subtle it can identify some of the personal information and maybe uh, provide a way to tag it and hence yeah. mask it yeah. um, but uh, the the Truada offering is the one that is bringing some new research assets after the GDP or guidelines uh, became clear yeah and then like we got into the effort of how do we cater to those requirements so these are relatively new uh, proprietary components they are not even being productized, so that's why okay. I'm calling as uh, proprietary okay. components that are going into this uh, hosted service today. IBM's got a big portfolio, so I'll understand uh, if you guys are still working out exactly what position, so Rebecca, go ahead. I just wanted to ask you about this, this new era of GDPR. So the last Hortonworks conference was, was sort of before it, it came into effect, and now we're, we're in this new era. How would you say, companies are reacting? Are, are they in the right space for it? In the, or in the sense of they're really still understanding the ripple effects and how it's all going to play out. But how would you describe your interactions with companies in terms of how they're dealing with these new requirements? They are still uh, trying to understand the requirements and interpret the requirements coming to uh, terms with what that really means. Um, so for example, um, I met with a customer, um, they have, uh, they are a multinational company, they have data centers across different geos, um, and they asked me, um, I have somebody from Asia trying to query the data, um, so that the query should go to Europe, um, but the query processing should not happen in Asia, the query processing all should happen in Europe, and only the output of the query should be um, sent back to Asia, like you won't be able to think in these terms before the GDPR guidelines right, got right. issued. So it's a, now, it's exceedingly complicated. But yeah. decoupling storage from processing enables those kinds of fairly complex scenarios for compliance purposes. Yeah, so it's I, not just about the access to data. Now you are getting into even where the processing happens and yeah. where the results are getting displayed. So. Uh, we are there may be severe penalties for not <laughs> doing that, so yes. your customers need to keep up. Uh, there was an announcement at this show at DataWorks 2018 of an IBM Hortonworks uh, where, uh, solution, IBM solution, IBM hosted analytics with Hortonworks. I wonder if you can speak a little bit about that, Pandit, in terms of what's, 
provided it's a subscription service to, you, if you could sure. tell me what, tell us what subset of IBM's analytics portfolio is hosted uh, for Hortonworks customers. Sure, as you said, it is a hosted offering. Yeah. Um, initially, we are starting that off as a base offering with three products. Uh, it will have HDP, uh, Big SQL, IBM DB2 Big SQL, and DSX, Data okay. Science Experience. Okay. Those are the three solutions. Uh, again, as I said, it's hosted on IBM Cloud. Um, so customers have a choice of uh, different configurations they can choose, whether uh, in VMs or bare metal. Again, I should say this is probably the only offering as of today that offers a bare metal configuration in the cloud. So it's for data, it's geared to data scientists, developers, and machine learning models who can train, who will build the models and train them in the in IBM Cloud, but on but uh, but in a hosted HDP in IBM Cloud. Is that correct? Yeah. So I would rephrase that a little bit, okay. right? So there are several different offerings on the cloud today, um, and we can think about them as, as you said, for ad hoc or ephemeral workloads. Um, also geared towards low cost. Okay. So you think about this offering as taking your uh, on-prem data uh, center experience directly onto the cloud. So it is geared towards a yeah, very high performance. Um, so the hardware and the software, they are all configured, optimized for providing high performance, not necessarily um, for ad hoc workloads or ephemeral mm -hmm. workloads. They, they are capable of handling massive workloads um, on sticky workloads, right? So mm -hmm. it's not meant for like, I turn this massive performance computing power for like a couple of hours and then switch them off, um, but rather I'm, I'm going to run these massive workloads uh, as if it is uh, located in my data center. Um, that's number one. Uh, it comes with uh, the complete uh, set of uh, HDP. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, there are, uh, currently in the cloud you have, you know, I have the, the Hive and HBase as uh, SQL engines and the storage separate. Um, you know, the security is optional, governance is optional. Mm -hmm. And so this comes with the whole enchilada, right? So it, it has security and governance all baked in. Okay. Um, it, it provides the option to use Big SQL, right? So for, because once you get onto the Hadoop, the next experience is to I want to run complex workloads, I want to run um, federated queries across Hadoop as well as other data stores. Uh, how do I handle those? And then it comes with data science experience also mm -hmm. um, configured uh, for best performance and integrated together. Mm -hmm. um, as a part of this partnership, so um, I mentioned earlier that um, we have progressed towards providing the story of an end-to-end -end solution. Mm -hmm. So the next steps of that are like, yeah, I can say that it's an end-to-end -end solution, but are the products look and feel like as if they are one solution? Yeah. So that's what we are getting into, and, and I have will feature some of those integrations. Mm -hmm. So for example, Big SQL, IBM product, uh, have, we have been working on it, baking it very closely with HDP, right? So mm -hmm. um, it can be deployed through Ambari, yeah, it is integrated with Atlas and Ranger for security, and mm -hmm. we are improving the integrations with Atlas for governance, um, and so if say you're building a smart a Spark uh, machine learning model inside of DSX um, on HDP within mm -hmm. IATH, uh, yeah, yes. IBM Host Analytics with Hortonworks on HTTP, HDP HDP 3.0, can you then containerize that machine? That's learning what model I was going next, Spark, <laughs> and then deploy it into an edge scenario. Sure. Um, so that's what I was going to. Ask. First was yeah. Big SQL. Okay. Um, the next one is DSX. So DSX is integrated with HDP as well. Okay. Um, so. Uh, we can run uh, DSX workloads on HTTP before, but what we have done now is, if you want to run the DSX workloads, like I want to run a Python workload, right? So I need to have Python libraries on all the nodes that I want to deploy. So suppose you are running a, a big cluster, 500 cluster. So I need to have Python libraries on all the 500 nodes, and I need to maintain the versioning of it. If I upgrade 
the versions, then I need to go and upgrade, make sure all of them are perfectly aligned. In this right? first version, will you able to be able to build, say, a Spark model and a TensorFlow model and so mm -hmm. forth and containerize them and deploy yes. them across a multi-cloud and, and orchestrate them with Kubernetes and mm -hmm. to do all that magic, will that, is that a capability now or in the future? plan for the future within this Yeah, portfolio? we have that uh, capability demonstrated in the pedestal today. Uh, yeah. So that is a new one, that uh, new integration that it's we powerful. are announcing. So we can run virtual, we call it as virtual Python environments, right? So a DSX can uh, containerize it and run that as workloads in the HTTP cluster. Yeah. So now you are making use of both the data in the cluster as well as the infrastructure of the cluster itself for running the workloads. So in terms of the layer stack, is it also incorporating the, the IBM D, uh, distributed deep learning technology that yeah. you've recently announced, uh, which I think is highly differentiated because you know deep learning has increasingly become a, a set of capabilities that are across a distributed mesh, playing sure. together as if they were one unified application. So, yeah. is that a capability now in this port in this solution, or will it be in the near future? Uh, which one? Can DDL you... distributed deep, deep learning. Uh, no, we have not, not gotten yet. that. Okay. Not yet. I know that's on the power AI on power mm -hmm. platform. Yes. Gotcha. That's what we'll be talking about next at next year's conference. Yeah, <laughs> so next year. can, Great. That's definitely on the roadmap. This we are starting with the base configuration of yeah. uh, bare metals and VM configuration. Right. Next one is to uh, you know depending on how the customers react to it. Um, definitely, we are thinking about okay bare metal that is optimized for yeah, with GPUs optimized for TensorFlow workloads. Right. Exciting. We'll be tuned uh, in uh, yeah. in coming Indeed months and we years. Will. To, I'm sure Indeed. you guys. Thank will you so much for coming yeah. on theCUBE, we appreciate it. Great, very good. I'm Rebecca Knight for James Kobielus. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of DataWorks just after this.